Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I like to stand when I lecture to my students because I, I need to stand to be seen. So, um, another comment I would like to make. Uh, the size of the audience seems to indicate how important climate change is to us. I hope there will be more people coming. So uh, eh, to use the uh, native language, kia ora. In my language, that's magandang hapon po. Or good afternoon, have a nice day, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> I would like to reiterate the thanks that David said for all of us to the New Zealand Foundation for bringing us here to Pacific Media Center and David. The, uh, the topic this afternoon is, uh, my topic anyway, is Asian Journalism Education and Key Challenges of Climate Change in Asia Pacific. Um, I would like first to give you an outline before I present to you my slides. I will first start with part one, where I will show some uh, slides uh, on topics or issues of climate change in Asia Pacific. My, my part of the world is Southeast Asia and uh, I will add the Pacific to this discussion. I, um, I, I do column writing for SciDevNet, uh, so the examples that I will present to you will be from SciDevNet, I, I guess as a way of advertising the, uh, the uh, website, which, uh, which gives me a chance to expound on the issues regarding climate change. Now, so um, first, I will I will start with I, it's not in the slide, but I just had to I had just had to start with this. This is one of the uh, the uh, stories I wrote for SciDevNet uh, about half a year ago. It's about Asia Pacific analysis, a plan for all typhoon seasons. It came uh, about because of the. Uh, probably the strongest typhoon to hit, uh, I guess, the Asia, Asian region uh, in history. And it uh, destroyed uh, practically uh, millions of homes in two provinces, in, well, basically two provinces plus neighboring provinces. And uh, we had about 10,000 Ten thousand casualties, and we compare this to the Indian, uh, the Indonesian tsunami, uh, which was probably the biggest because it killed two hundred fifty thousand people. And um, just just to summarize what I said in that uh, piece, um, natural mega disasters in the region have killed hundreds of thousands. That's Haiyan, Typhoon Haiyan that hit the Philippines and the tsunami that hit Indonesia. So governments are urged to keep people away from danger zones when they build, when they rebuild. And uh, destruction is an opportunity to make sound plans and build back better homes. Build back better so that uh, when the next typhoon comes, you will be better prepared for it. So how, how what is this? Okay. Well, I, I, I don't have to repeat this. This is what, uh, what uh, David said in the introduction. Climate change is happening. There's no doubt about it. Only the Republicans in the U.S. don't believe it. Uh, Donald Trump does not believe in uh, climate change. No. Did you, do any of you realize that? The, the Republicans in the U.S. 
uh, still up to this day do not believe that the, there is climate change. But given that climate change may be one of the greatest threats to the planet, the impact will be strongest in the Asia Pacific region. So the next question is what is the role of media and media educa education in the region? So let me start by saying that there, there is coverage already in place. The newspapers are, are giving it uh, enough coverage. And uh, some science uh, websites like SciDevNet, which I work for, are already paying attention to this problem. And so I will just show you a few slides uh, to show the coverage. And then part two of my presentation will be uh, on the topic of what is journalism education doing about it. In, in the region. Uh, this is one story that I wrote, Time for Seeds to say, Set Sail. This was when the uh, small island developing states uh, had their international conference, the biggest ever in the Pacific. And it netted many partnerships, money, and and collaborative, uh, um, shall we say, connections to, uh, to solve the problem of climate change in the Pacific. But my point is that it is ironic that as conferences get larger, the problems get bigger. And uh, there's nothing, very little done about it after the conference. So there is a need for a concrete time-bound small island developing states roadmap that is positive and that will accelerate action on the problem. I, and then I, uh, I had another story on tackling the issue of seed survival. Seeds conferences to take up partnership schemes against unique vulnerabilities. Uh, adoption of a seeds accelerated modalities of action pathway. This was the, the um, paper that came out of that conference. And the need for sustainable development and climate change as a top con conference priority issue. This one is uh, a big issue in the Pacific. I'm sorry, Hermin, I have to bring this up. You know. uh, People in Singapore, Malaysia, uh, even as far as southern Philippines, the, we, we, we really inhale the smoke coming from the Indonesian fires. You know? So I, you know, we highlighted this in the side of net, and we said the toxic smog has pushed Indonesia to become the fourth largest emitter in the world. And if it does not put out these fires quickly, Indonesia may miss its emissions target as agreed upon by COP21. And so uh, there is a need for more action on that. And then I, I have written on climate change and agriculture, how it affects agriculture. It has changed the weather patterns so that the farmers do not know anymore when to plant or when to harvest. It has, but farmers have have been urged to, to adjust, to get wiser, and to practice climate smart agriculture. That means you have to study now wh where, when the rains come and when they don't. And to, to have uh, uh, infrastructure in place like dams and, and uh, irrigation systems so that uh, you will be prepared for the season when the rains will not come. I thought this was an interesting story when I wrote this about a year ago, but I understand that uh, they are not so, uh, shall we say, serious or they don't think that this is a, uh, a possibility that they will uh, follow. But uh, I was am amused by the story about the, the uh, two 
two island nations, the Vanuatu and Kiribati, is eyeing the idea of migrating to the bigger islands uh, when the time comes when the sea will, will envelop their smaller islands. You know. And uh, I wrote a story about that. So this is an issue. Yeah, I had this another one on the Indonesian forest fires. They are caused by agricultural firms and farmers clearing land for uh, rubber plantations. But they are har harming the neighboring nations. And th that's a big problem, I, which I, I just want to bring this to your attention, but we don't need to solve it here. OK, so then I, uh, I, I, the next question that was asked of me was, what are we, or the, the people in, in the communication schools, the journalism co uh, schools doing about it? But before you, you really go to that point, the, the point is that how do the present media people cope with this problem? Uh, the, uh, the point is that as of now, the, uh, the newspapers and broadcast stations and in online uh, uh, journalism are coping already by training their people on the job. So the training is not formal uh, degrees, you know, but on the job training. Uh, as you go along, as you cover the typhoons, you learn on the job. And that's what the, the, the big uh, stations in the Philippines and other parts of Southeast Asia are doing. And I guess uh, also in the Pacific. So the, the training is on the job. It's not degree. As, as of now, there are not too many schools offering degrees in environmental journalism or disaster uh, journalism. But uh, the, the seminars that are existing are done by... Uh, by the media organizations themselves. In the case of the Philippines, we have the Philippine Press Institute uh, and the Philippine broadcasters who are conducting seminars to train their, their journalists in actual uh, coverage of uh, disasters. So I, I guess that would be the case with, uh, with the other countries in Asia, in Southeast Asia. And, and, and I, as I would probably guess, in the Pacific. Uh, so I, let, me, let us go to the uh, little survey I did. I, I, I tried to uh, conduct a, a mini survey online. I sent out 10 questionnaires. And believe it or not, uh, after one month, I got only two responses. But, but I think they are indicative. You know? So they are by any, not by any means uh, representative, but they are indicative of, well, number one, the fact that very few responded is an indication that they don't think climate change is such an important issue as of now. They don't, they don't feel it yet in, in most countries except the small, smaller uh, island nations of the Pacific and the Philippines because the Philippines is one, uh, the second most disaster prone uh, country in the world. We have more typhoons. What is the third? Uh, in the Caribbean, I think. In the, in the uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> we have that distinction. Anyway, <laughs> so I, I, I had this question. I have six, six questions. We'll go through them quickly, and then that will give you an idea of what the communication schools, journalism schools are doing and thinking about the problem of climate change reporting or training people to become uh, climate change uh, reporters. So then the question I asked was, do you think uh, journalism schools are giving enough emphasis to this issue? They said, no, of course. No. Uh, why? Lack faculty? I am inclined to suspect that it is the issue of capacity, the ability of the school to offer the, the course. The lack of awareness about the need for such courses. A lot of Asia Pacific schools are aware that climate change is a very important issue. Some of them are trying to set the 
I guess to, to start the related courses. Oh, did I go back? Uh, I went back. Okay. But yes. Is enough attention being paid to the status of climate change, refugees, and human rights? No. And the link is even harder to make. Uh, is the, the guy who answered this question could not see a relationship between climate change and human rights. You know. We are aware of the issue of climate change refugees, and as academic institutions, we are following it. In your opinion, are print broadcast and social media keeping up with science? Yes, media do try, but this is not particularly a dramatic story to cover except when there are disasters. Journalists only, only cover disasters, but not, not science or, you know, um, anything that is not uh, dramatic enough. So what do you think are the challenges for journalism education and the best strategies in dealing with the issue? This guy has uh, I guess a philosophical solution. I think the continuing erosion of profits is making the news organizations use more freelancers or else free, free citizen con content. In other words, money. They need money to, to cover uh, such an, an important issue as climate change. This gives short shrift to training and education. It is a short term gain. The newspaper comes out at the lower cost. I guess what he means is we, we need money to, to do this kind of thing. But this lowers the quality of the paper and turns off good people. The news organizations need to make it attractive for good people to join them. Students need more practice and professional experience. We should create more opportunities for students to practice. That, that's another point at the last minute. Some schools uh, have been mentioned as offering journalism or environmental journalism. Beijing, Normal University, East China, Normal University, Wazong, University of Science Technology, my former university, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, we have science journalism regularly, which I, which I was teaching for a while before I retired. And then, uh, yeah, courses in environmental science that's offered by University of the Philippines. And we have a graduate program in environmental science. Then the other university, which I used to be connected with in the, in the Philippines, Silliman University probably has a rare uh, course by, by uh, I guess, Asian standards. It has a certificate in environmental journalism. It's a, an undergraduate course. And I, I, I doubt if too many other schools are offering the same thing. And it has this uh, a very interesting uh, program. It has a news service, the Silliman University Research and Environment News, or SU Renews. <coughs> Officially launched April 30, but funded by the American Embassy, based in Silliman University. And uh, I guess the, the connection was one of our former graduates, Yoli de Guzman, uh, is working with the embassy, and therefore she was able to connect. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, the project is under the College of Mass Communication of Silliman University. And the project director is a teaching staff of the, of the college and former dean of the college. So this is an example of a strategy that might uh, work for these uh, Asian schools. Uh, why not make use of the research done by your researchers in the university and turn them into uh, information that can be used by the mass media 
and use that as an instructional tool for your students to learn how to write uh, dramatic, inter interesting news based on research and on the topic of climate change. No? So at the same time, it's, it's a, a teaching tool for the students. At the same time, it's a way to bring attention to the, uh, to the attention of the public, uh, the, the issues regarding climate change. So that, that I guess, winds up my... Uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you for listening. Kia ora, Tatu. Thank you.